Hello and welcome to BoatingCruising.com and our how-to series. In this series we're going to talk about adding a 30 amp uh, shore power to your boat. There's a lot of good reasons to add a 30 amp system. First of all you can add some more modern conveniences. Heating and air conditioning, your blender so you make sure you have plenty of margaritas. Uh, plus I think that if you're getting ready to sell your boat, it may not add value to your boat, but it might. Uh, but it'll help you sell your boat easier. Now I'm working with Gratitude Yacht Center out of Rock Hall, Maryland to show you just how easy this process is. There's two parts to this. The shore power inlet, where you plug your boat into the shore power, and then inside your boat, the distribution panel, or the breaker box, to which you're going to hook up your outlets and other uh, modern conveniences. And now at the end of this video we're going to talk a little bit about what type of wire to use while you're setting this whole thing up. But for now, let's get started and let's get to work. Well in part one I installed the shore power inlet. Now here's where I want to install the new panel. This was an easy task thanks to Paneltronics. I went to the Paneltronics website for the AC distribution panel. They've got a large selection of panels ready for immediate delivery or if you need a special panel they can work with you to customize it for your needs. For example the panel I wanted came with a 30 amp main and three 15 amp breakers. But I needed one position at 20 amps for my HVAC. So they worked with me and we modified the panel to accommodate my requirements. Another key thing with Paneltronics is they've been in business for over 30 years supplying panels for many of the boat builders, RVs, trucks, buses, construction equipment, etc. You know these panels are high quality and you can tell the minute you open the package. They offer DC and AC panels, combination panels, waterproof panels and switches. Most of these are customized to your specific requirements and if you have any questions they've got technical support staff who's always uh, happy to help you and that's a comforting thought especially for us DIYers. Now Paneltronics offers so many accessories that I recommend you visit their website, get a full scope of what they offer, if the product uh, selection is a little overwhelming, which it can be, just drop them an email or pick up the phone and talk to one of their techs. They can walk you through the process and help you select the right panel. So when my part came in, I went to the uh, boat and laid out my tools. Some of the key tools are the uh, electrical tester, uh, the wire stripper, and the uh, stab saw. Now I turned off all the power to the boat, including the DC power, then opened up the existing panel, double checked, made sure there was no power to there. I didn't want to be sticking my hands back there with uh, some live wires yet. Then I double checked where the panel was going to go. It worked out fine. Made a little template, rather than just measuring, because I'm not that good at measuring. Here I've got it all marked out. I'm ready to drill my pilot holes. Double checked, made sure there were no wires back there. Now there's going to be some there, but they were far enough away. And when I drilled through, I was careful not to let the drill bit go all the way in once it broke through. I drilled the four pilot holes, and this is where I used the jab saw. And again, just take your time. You don't want to cut any existing wires got the hole cut, dry fitted the panel, made sure it was going to fit, fit perfectly thanks to my template. Then I did a little cleanup work. Next I prepared the wires to attach them to the new panel. I like to use these eye inlets rather than just the open end one here. Make sure you get the wires twisted. Uh, I added the uh, eyelet I could have used a little better uh, crimper here, but give this a good solid crimp. And test it. Make sure it's going to stay. <laughs> See, look at this. 
I didn't crimp it tight enough. You don't want that to happen to your wires while you're out sailing around or boating around. So have a few extra inlet or eyelets. Make sure you get a good solid crimp here. Oh, that's tough. There we go. I think I got it now. Yeah, see there? Now it's nice and tight. Now here on the panel you'll notice that unlike a household panel the um, neutral and the ground have their own separate bus. Now what's nice about this is you'll see that the um, breakers all come pre-wired to the main so you really you just have to hook up the main wires the black and the white just put black to black white to white and then uh, when you hook up your appliances or whatever you're hooking up you put the uh, neutral wire on the neutral bus, the uh, ground wire on the ground bus, and the positive or the power to the back of the breaker. When you hook up the shore power wires to your main breaker, you turn the panel over and you're looking at the panel, the white and the black wire go on the left side of the main breakers as indicated in this diagram not on the right side. So I hooked up the shore power, flipped on the breakers, green lights indicate that I've got the right power. There's also a reverse polarity red light if you have reverse polarity. Now look how nice this all fit together. Turned out great thanks to Panaltronics. Well now let's talk about the right wiring to use. Now don't use household type wiring. It's just not right. As Jack Hefner from Gratitude Yacht Center pointed out, it's not safe and you're not going to do well on a boat survey with the wrong kind of wire. Here you can see on the household wire, the ground is not shielded and it's solid copper. Compared to the marine grade, it's, str it's stranded and the ground is also shielded and it's flexible. Now this wire is also tinned so it holds up against the uh, harsh marine environment a lot better. And from all of us at BoatingCruising.com, Gratitude Yacht Center, and Paneltronics, happy and safe boating to you, your family, and friends.